In general, you need to be very careful using infinity and calculations. Actually, it's not, it's not a number, so you cannot use algebraic rules in order to calculate stuff. So here I will provide an example where it's typically wrong to state that infinity minus infinity equals zero. So consider the following example where we have fx equals to equal to the square root of x squared plus x and another function g of x equals x. But at least we see that the limit of x to infinity of fx equals infinity. Yeah, the values of fx become arbitrarily large and the same holds for g of x. Yeah, so the limit of x to infinity of g of x equals infinity. So now the question is, what happens if we look at the difference of the two functions? So can we calculate the limit of x to infinity of fx minus g of x? Yeah, so what will it be when it exists? Because we're not sure whether this limit exists. Well, actually, we can show that it exists since the limit of x to infinity of fx minus g of x, and we're going to apply the, the root trick once again. So we get the square root of x squared plus x minus x, and we multiply by 1, and in the numerator we write the square root of x squared plus x plus x divided by the square root of x squared plus x plus x. Yeah, so here we didn't do much. There's only a different way of writing a 1. But by doing so, we can multiply the numerator with the square root of x squared plus x minus x, and we obtain x squared plus x minus x squared. And as a denominator, we get the square root of x squared plus x plus x. And now the numerator simplifies to x. And we are, we will divide the numerator and denominator by x. Yeah, it's a technique that we've seen before. Divide by the highest power of numerator and denominator. So we're going to do this for the denominator as well. Divide by x. And since x goes to infinity, we can bring x squared under the square root notation, so we get 1 over 1 plus x divided, 1 divided by x plus 1. And this clearly has a limit of a half since 1 over x goes to 0 and we will have 2 in the denominator and 1 in the numerator. So this gives us a reason to believe that this equals a half. What you may not do is is use infinity to calculate stuff. So what I mean by that is that you calculate the limit since fx goes to infinity and g of x goes to infinity, that you just take a difference of infinity with infinity and conclude that this equals zero. Typically, your math teacher will freak out when he sees this on, on an exam.